Hi, welcome to my farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. And if that sort of thing is just you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you find value in this video, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow and I sure do appreciate it. Today's video is part of Diana and Bikini Nana's collaboration, Dehydrating Foods, what I love and what I don't. I would like to show you what I like to dehydrate and what I probably won't dehydrate again. Now this video is part of a collaboration where there's at least 10 other channels involved and I would hope you go watch all the rest of the videos to be inspired of what you can dehydrate and what you might not dehydrate again. And if you're new to dehydrating, I highly suggest reading the instructions to your dehydrator. I have a Nesco and an Excalibur. What I did was just start throwing stuff in and I found out the hard way that there's actual processes of how to dehydrate your food whether it be blanching or even washing your herbs or fruits or vegetables there are safety food guidelines that you need to follow with that being said i'm gonna start by telling you what i don't like to dehydrate or probably will change and do differently i'm not gonna dehydrate summer squash like i did before because i left the peel one and we had so much summer squash that I did all the same way and didn't really pay attention to how I was supposed to dehydrate it. I left the peels on and I made a casserole with it like you would in a gratin with potatoes. It was good except for the peels. It was made it quite bitter. I'm not going to dehydrate marshmallows just for the simple fact that my husband really likes us to eat healthy and marshmallows is just a pile of sugar and they take forever if you've actually dehydrated them. I don't have an example of this either. Green beans. I dehydrated green beans and they end up being really, really puny and when they don't constitute well in soups. Lemon slices. I'm not gonna dehydrate them again. Yes, they're pretty in a jar, and I thought they'd be great for teas, whether it be hot or ice, but the pip just gives it an off flavor for me. Lemon zest. I just won't do a, as much as I do at one time because I don't go through it. I thought I would love it in um, marinades and salad dressings and baking, along with orange zest. I thought it'd be great for when I make a quick bread. And on the same line, I love strawberry powder, but I may use so much of it that I probably won't go through it before it goes bad. Yes, I love it in icings and yogurt and all that. Just won't make so much of it. And I have a tutorial on how to do it on my channel. I mean, yeah, I love strawberries and love powder, but don't do so much at one time. Now, I did cherries. I think these are sour cherries off one of my Mennonite friends' trees. And my mother-in-law said that she was concerned about how chewy they were when they came out of the dehydrator. So she made me put them in the refrigerator. So I don't know if I did something wrong and maybe I should go back to the drawing board. But I'm ready to push these out if somebody doesn't tell me how to reconstitute them. Cause I thought they'd be great for cherry pies and make a pie filling with, or like hand pies. So I need help with this. This is a fruit leather I've made from my home canned applesauce, frozen cranberries and apples. It's, it's it tastes amazing. And, but we keep it in the freezer for safekeeping cause I want it to last longer. Well, guess what? Out of sight, out of mind. So therefore, it's not going to be dehydrated again in this household. That is the things that I'm not going to dehydrate again. I would like to dehydrate potato slices for Elgottens. I mean, I do buy the slices already, but they have adjectives to them to make them last in the store. And I'm like wondering why. So I would like to do potato slices. I would like to dehydrate caramelized onions. And again, I'm going to follow safe food safety handling there because you can't add butter or oils to dehydrated foods because it'll turn them rancid 
And I also would like to do a mixture of onions and celery and carrots for soup starters. Like either just chunk it so it's Miracoy. Now, I would like to have that on hand for a quick soup during the winter. Now what I love to dehydrate are my homegrown vegetables in my garden. Whether it be spinach and I turn it into powders. Now we don't do smoothies around here just because my husband loves his chocolate milk. But I love adding spinach to casseroles. I love dehydrating sweet potatoes to make instant mashed potatoes with, bu with butter and cinnamon and brown sugar. That's a treat once in a while. I love adding carrots that are from my garden, which homegrown carrots taste so much sweeter than what you get in the store. I think once you, once you grow them, you'll never go back. So these are what I grew last year and dehydrated. I dehydrated instead of canned them last year just because I was having some medical issues that needed to be addressed and I couldn't stand for very long with the medication that they had me on. So we dehydrated and boy do I love them. Now if you're a beginner to dehydrating, mushrooms are the easiest thing to dehydrate. They're different reconstituted so don't think they're going to bounce back. They don't. But I like adding them to egg casseroles and if I'm in a pinch and don't have enough fresh mushrooms on hand, I'll make beef stroganoff with this. Or you can turn it into a powder and have a great umami flavor like you do with celery powder. I love celery powder. Like if you dehydrate your own celery, which has a more intense flavor than you will ever get from store-bought food. I can't stress that enough about that on my channel. But I love adding this to casseroles, soups, anything you cook from scratch. Just add a little bit and it'll go a long way. Chicken salad is amazing with this. Or my air fryer chicken patties. Bell peppers, I'll always dehydrate from my garden. I don't have enough freezer space and you know how I feel about canned bell peppers. And if you've been around my channel long enough, you know I love pumpkin roll whoopie pies made from dehydrated powder and pumpkin spice lattes I've done showing you how to use dehydrated pumpkin powder. And I'm going to try to figure out how to make pickled red beet eggs from dehydrated red beets. I'm sure it's simple. I'm sure it might take two weeks for these to actually be pickled eggs. What I started out doing when I started dehydrating anything was herbs, parsley and oregano. My mom, that's all she dehydrates, I think. But I love oregano in my sandwiches and all my cooking. I make all my dry mix rubs and mixes, seasonings like ranch and Italian blends from my dehydrated herbs that I grew in my own garden. And like I said before, the herbs that you get at the store have no flavor compared to what you grow at your house. Drying and growing herbs is so easy. If you buy one book and one book only about dehydrating food, this would be the book to buy. They have lots of instructions on how to dehydrate your foods, then how to use them in recipes. In fact, the recipe I use for my Thanksgiving stuffing bread, how to make stuffing, comes from this book for my dehydrated herbs and bread. It shows you how to dehydrate the bread as well. So thanks for stopping by the farmhouse today. I hope you enjoyed your stay and I hope you've learned something. And until next time, God bless and take care. If you've made it this far into the video, I'm sure you're loving the content of this channel. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on each video. May I suggest watching this next? Until next time, take care and God bless.